as I said already, like Philip, we could say, Lord, show us the Father. And we could be praying, and it's, and it's good to pray that prayer. We could be praying, Lord, reveal yourself, and Lord, let me see you. And we could mean that sincerely. But brethren, if we pray that prayer, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if you look up and see Brother Ray's face. See Brother Ray's face. See Brother Ray's face. And God said, has Brother Ray been with you for 30 years and you've still not seen the Father? What more must he do? What more must he say? How can God more fully reveal his glory than through Emmanuel? Brethren, it's good. I'm, I'm not against private devotions. I'm not against a prayer. By no means. We, we will starve and die spiritually if we don't, if we don't maintain good works, uh, among which these are some of the chief. But saints, there has to be something greater, something more. There must be a connection to Emmanuel himself. Himself. For us to be saved. And tonight, the same questions that were asked in the time of Jesus are still being asked. Even Pilate said, what shall I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? And I think that we would all say, oh, I know what I do with Jesus. I'd welcome him to my heart. Well, just look around and see who Jesus is. Just look around and see who Jesus is. Just look around and see who Jesus is. You say, well, yes, yes, I've already welcomed Brother Ray into my heart. Yes, I've already welcomed Brother Ray into my heart. Yes, I've already welcomed Brother Ray into my heart. Do you know that you need to love the apostles unconditionally tonight? Do you know that you need to love the apostles unconditionally tonight? And I got that, I believe, from Brother Patrick right here. You might have thought that it's time that you need to love Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Unconditionally. But saints, there's something. There's someone besides Jesus. That you need to love unconditionally. So we would have to say, like Brother Addison said, the cubit is about this. Whatever that is of that, of that angel which again happens to be Brother Ray. Yes. But you understand what I'm saying tonight, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, and that Brother Ray's person is not, divor is not divorced, is not separate from his calling and from the message, and that really, and I'll, I'll quote, I'll, I'll not quote, but I'll, I'll reference Brother, Brother Randy uh, one, more, one more time in this. Really, the only reference the one on the throne has is the throne and the others on the thrones around it. You say, well, brother, does that just lay it, does that just lay it all open? And, and, and where's, where's our safety? Oh, brother, there's nothing more safe. There's nothing more safe than Emmanuel. And if we want safety, we should never have gone with Jesus because every, every danger abounded there. Yeah. See, well, what do you mean? That was so safe. Yes, exactly. It's that safe. It's that safe. Emmanuel, God with us. Saints, you've been, you've been wonderful to preach to tonight. God is not ashamed of his children. And I just, I, just like to, I just like to challenge you in closing tonight that you would ask some questions. I'm not, I'm not saying tonight, you know, rush to Brother Patrick and ask him questions all evening. You know what I'm saying? The same kind of questions that the woman was supposed to ask. Some of you have been holding back the questions because you didn't believe the man. Because you didn't believe the man. You didn't believe that he could do for you what you needed to have done. But Jesus said, if you knew who I was, you would ask for water. And then you'd get an experience.
that was springing up into everlasting life. There are some tonight here that are not saved. You say, brother, I thought this was more a message for the saints. Of course it was for the saints. This is for everyone. Emmanuel should make every sinner crumble. Crumble down. If John the Apostle fell down, and we didn't get there tonight, but if John the Apostle fell down to worship, you say, well, you shouldn't have worshipped. The angel stopped him. Yes, but the scripture says that was John's intent. He said, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel. Shouldn't every sinner fall down? Shouldn't every sinner fall down at the feet of God in the flesh and say, save me? Because salvation has come nigh. Salvation has come nigh. Nearer to you than it's ever been before. Nearer to you than it's ever been before. These people have lost the miracle of Emmanuel. But tonight, I challenge you to leave the camp. Just like the Jews were challenged to do it by Paul. It was the same offense of the cross. It was a man who, who was able to deal with the law and say, this is in and this is out. And for some people, that was more than they wanted to deal with. And so they said, oh, no, we believe in Moses. I don't know about you. We've got to keep the law. We've got to keep the law. It wasn't that they wanted to keep the law. It was that they wanted to preserve themselves. And the law afforded some kind of moat that they felt comfortable inside of and could deal with. And so that's why Paul said, if I still preach persecution, then the offense of the cross is ceased but it's not ceased tonight saints we're going to keep on preaching this till the Lord comes back and don't be ashamed of me don't be ashamed of brother Steve and brother Ray and brother Randy confess confess us before men confess us before men confess us before men and I can guarantee you tonight on the basis of the word of God, that your name will be confessed before the Father.